Welcome to the Watchman Channel. This channel is all about world news and Bible prophecy, pointing to the soon return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I am asking that if you can, to please help to financially support this ministry. If you feel led to pledge any amount of money, it would be extremely helpful and greatly appreciated. There is a PayPal link in the description box and in my pinned comment below. You can also donate using Cash App. My cash tag is dollar sign watchman 1963 thank you all so much for your prayers and support god bless so listen i think we all know um this is a fight for freedom this is a fight for freedom the fundamental freedom to make decisions about one's own body and not have their government tell them what they're supposed to do And as we know, almost two years ago, the highest court in our land, the court of Thurgood and RBG, took a constitutional right that had been recognized from the people of America, from the women of America. And now in states across our nation, extremists have proposed and passed laws that criminalize doctors, punish women, Laws that threaten doctors and nurses with prison time, even for life, simply for providing reproductive care. Laws that make no exception for rape or incest. Even reviving laws from the 1800s. Across our nation, we witness a full-on assault state by state on reproductive freedom. Joining us now, California Congresswoman and the 52nd Speaker of the House, mm -hmm. Speaker Emerita Nancy Pelosi. I want to get you to react to that. Uh, abortion now basically illegal in Florida. Um, it's illegal in a number of states. We can put up a map. We just saw what happened in Arizona. The travel that women need to endure to, to get an abortion, even in emergencies. What do you make of that? Well, people have to view abortion as a democracy issue. This is about freedom to make your own decisions for a woman. It's a personal decision. It's an economic decision at the kitchen table of America's families, if and when they would expand their families or even start their families. People saw the power of women coming forth and their families for their freedom. It's a freedom issue. We have to win the White House with our great reelect, our great president of the United States, Joe Biden, who has a vision for America, is in keeping with the vision of our founders, the sacrifice of our men and women in uniform, the aspirations of our children and their families. A person who, because of his experience, his long term, his age, he knows the issues so well and is strategic and has proven in two years when we had the majority that he can get the job done. He knows how to do it. And in his heart, he cares so much about the people of America. President Biden right. gets reelected yes. and there is a Democratic House and a Democratic Senate. What can President Biden and the Democrats do to protect abortion nationwide? Very clearly, we can enshrine into the law Roe v. Wade. The Bible tells us in the last days that people would lack sympathetic understanding, that people would be unfeeling and pitiless toward their own family, as we read in 2 Timothy 3, 1 through 5. This know also, that in the last days perilous times shall come, for men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof, from such turn away. Without natural affection is the Greek word astorgos, which means without affection for family, parents or children, thus hard-hearted towards kindred. I can think of nothing more hard-hearted towards kindred than those who want to murder their own child. Many people in our nation today exhibit insanity because God gave them over to a debased mind, and the endless insane news headlines prove it. Romans 128-32 And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a debased mind 
to do those things which are not fitting, being filled with all unrighteousness, sexual immorality, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, evil-mindedness, they are whisperers, backbiters, haters of God, violent, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, undiscerning, untrustworthy, unloving, unforgiving, unmerciful, who knowing the righteous judgment of God, that those who practice such things are deserving of death, not only do the same, but also approve of those who practice them. There is good news for anyone who has had an abortion, and that is, that God offers forgiveness to anyone who confesses their sins, as we read in 1 John 1 9. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. 1 Peter 2 24. Who Himself bore our sins in His own body on the tree, that we, having died to sins, might live for righteousness, by whose stripes you were healed. Jesus said, as a sign of his coming and the end of the age, there would be an increase in deception, false Christ who will deceive many, wars and rumors of wars, nation against nation and kingdom against kingdom, famines, pestilences, earthquakes, Christian persecution, apostasy, false prophets, and lawlessness causing the love of many to grow cold. Jesus said all of these signs would come like birth pains. Jesus was likening last day's events to a woman in labor. As the labor progresses, the pains increase in both frequency and intensity until the baby finally comes. As we get closer to Jesus' return, all the signs he gave us as a sign of his coming and the end of the age will become more frequent and more intense. All of these signs are manifesting around the world in our time. We're going to start with weather with some severe storms and flooding that's getting even worse in Texas. Many roads in the region are swamped, making driving impossible. The water in some areas are so deep you can barely see the tops of garages. That storm is continuing to pound Conroe in southeast Texas. And we're seeking shelter right now, not because of the rain, but because of the lightning that we're starting to get. And that's a little bit dangerous. Now, Parts north of Houston have received about eight inches of rain. All that water has to go somewhere. And let me show you where it's going right now. It is a major problem. It is starting to creep up into homes at this point, blocking roads, and more rain is on the way. Parts of Conroe, Texas are swamped. This is my second flood in, in three months. And I have six feet of water in my house. About four inches of rain fell in the past 24 hours, sending more water into the already swollen San Jacinto River and flooding parts of the city. Across southeast Texas, roads were inundated, leaving some vehicles submerged. You're driving into the creek. No, 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 stop. In College Station, this driver was unable to see where the road ended and the creek began. She then abandoned her sinking car. She is okay. That is the important part. Her car, uh, maybe not so much. North of Houston in Montgomery County, the flooding is so extreme in certain areas, the view from above shows water rising halfway up homes, and dozens of rescues were reported across the region. High water vehicles like this one are the only way to get around certain neighborhoods. In Livingston, Texas, drone video shows water so high and expansive, we could not travel there. We were able to get to nearby Cold Spring and spoke with one resident who evacuated her home. It's been stressful. I haven't slept good in like four nights. Just worried about everything going on. Tonight, the deadly flooding disaster in Brazil. Days of heavy rains across the southern state of Rio Grande do Sul, triggering massive floods. Emergency crews using helicopters to airlift stranded residents to safety. Aerial footage shows mudslides flowing down mountains, smashing into homes, gaping holes left in roads, others completely overrun. Even this animal caught up in the raging current. The floods are killing at least 10 people leaving more than 20 missing and forcing thousands to flee their homes. Local authorities now calling on the federal government for assistance. The president of Brazil, Luiz Inácio Lula da Silva, touching down in the region, greeting officials on the ground. A region desperate for assistance as it tries to keep its head above water. At least one person has died in a mudslide after a severe thunderstorm hit to the north of France. The 57-year-old victim was found lifeless by rescue divers meters from her home. Her husband was injured and taken to hospital while their house was destroyed by the flood of water and mud. Some 40 other residents were affected by the extreme episode. In the Côte d'Or region, farmers suffer a colossal economic loss 
as fields were ravaged by the storm, losing hectares of cereal. Rocks of ice could be found on their land following heavy rain and an impressive hailstorm. In 20 minutes, the storm managed to destroy hectares of vines as well. It is feared that there will be a long-term impact on the vineyards destroyed, but it will take several weeks to assess the extent of the losses. Jackson and Dungu says he's been trying to prevent a crisis in his community for weeks. The crisis came. Now he's trying to make a footpath across this river where the road once passed. The water was so radiant. Weeks of torrential rains flooded his neighborhood on the outskirts of Nairobi in Kiambu County. People had to be rescued from rooftops. Nearly 200 people have been killed in Kenya's floods. Some people here say they've never known rains or floods like this before. Scientists expect climate change to bring more extreme weather. Kenya's iconic tourist destination, the Masai Mara Wildlife Reserve, flooded when a river burst its banks. Dozens of hotel workers and tourists had to be rescued. It's Kenya's Red Cross that's come to help in many places. People are asking why the government hasn't done more. Jesus said a sign of his return would be more frequent and more intense weather, as we read in Matthew 24, 7 and 8. And there will be famines, pestilences, and earthquakes in various places. All these are the beginning of birth pains. Pestilence is the Greek word loimus, which means a plague. Definition of a plague is any large-scale calamity, especially when thought to be sent by God. God has used plagues in the form of extreme weather in the past and will again in the future. The seventh plague on Egypt was hail. Don't forget about the famine in Joseph's time. One of the biggest is the flood in the book of Genesis. In the future, during the seven-year tribulation, God will once again use extreme weather in the form of pestilence as judgment. In Revelation 16:21, God uses hailstones weighing 100 pounds each, and great hail from heaven fell upon men, each hailstone about the weight of a talent. Men blasphemed God because of the plague of the hail, since that plague was exceedingly great. In Revelation 16:8 and 9, God uses scorching heat. Then the fourth angel poured out his bowl on the sun, and power was given to him to scorch men with fire, and men were scorched with great heat, and they blasphemed the name of God who has power over these plagues, and they did not repent and give him glory. So when Jesus Christ warns us that just before his second coming, there will be famines, pestilences, and earthquakes in various places, you had better believe that these occurrences are a sign from God and that he is about to intervene. Psalm 18.7 Then the earth shook and trembled. The foundations of the hills also quaked and were shaken because he was angry. Did you feel it? A 4.1 magnitude earthquake struck near the borders of Riverside and Orange County this afternoon. People from across Southern California felt the quake with shaking reported as far away as Encinitas and Santa Clarita. It was a 4.1 magnitude quake. Doesn't feel like it was that big, but it was enough to rattle Del Lago liquor here in Corona. And I'm joined with the owner, Nabil. Take uh, tell me a little bit about what you guys felt because we were saying how it doesn't seem like it was that big, but when you were here, it seemed a lot bigger. It was really, really strong and we felt big jolt and uh, it, it was really strong, very loud. We felt like something hit the building. So we had one customer start running out of the building and we started running out here and we noticed that a few bottles from top shelf and the second shelf fell and uh, it was... Uh, Yes, maybe it's 4.1, but it feels way, way, way stronger than 4.1. I'll show you some of the video that he sent us, his surveillance video that shows uh, some of the stuff being knocked off the shelves and this entire area rattled because of that earthquake. I had just backed out of my garage and I was, I went, put my transmission into drive from reverse and my car started jumping around and I thought, the transmission's going. And then I sat there a minute and I thought, now this is an earthquake. I'd take this over tornadoes and cyclones and snow and ice. I was sitting. Sitting, but you didn't feel like a shaking or anything? Just a slight, but I didn't realize that's what it was. You know, it was just a, I, I didn't think too much of it. You know, I guess I've been through enough of them now, so I don't really, if it ain't a big one, I ain't gonna recognize it. 
And we also spoke to seismologist Dr. Lucy Jones, who says this is a good reminder of what we can expect maybe one day when the big quake hits. We learned today that another earthquake has rattled nerves in New Jersey. This morning's quake set in near the Somerset County town of Peapack around 7 a.m. Latest earthquake, the aftershock uh, since the 4.8 quake rocked New Jersey last month. So that one was 2.6. 2.6. That's really about, you know, the limit. It used to be what we would expect around here, but 4.8, that was something. Yes, my entire house shook violently for about 20 seconds. With the 4.8? Yes, with the 4.8. Same here, yeah. Yes. Isn't it an exciting experience? I no, no, not exciting. <laughs> Been a lot of movement as of late here in the parts of Central and North Jersey. In fact, take a look at this. What we were doing is we were looking at the total number of aftershocks in and around the area. Now, this is the information that was put out from the USGS. I mean, 159 aftershocks just since that first one on April 5th. Luke 2111, and there will be great earthquakes in various places and famines and pestilences, and there will be fearful sights and great signs from heaven. In Taiwan, earthquake warning smartphone apps are surging in popularity. This surge is due to high demand from people who are eager to get a few extra seconds to take cover. After more than 1,300 aftershocks rattled the island over the course of the last month. Initially, the app had about 3,000 users, but recent seismic activity has pushed its popularity to nearly 370,000 users. Following a deadly 7.2 magnitude quake on the 3rd of April, which claimed 17 lives, Taiwan has experienced as many as about 1,300 tremors that have caused widespread anxiety. There are five earthquakes that occurred during the Seven Year Tribulation, three of which are called Great Earthquakes. The largest and final earthquake to ever rattle planet Earth takes place during the last half of the Seven Year Tribulation as we read in Revelation 16, 17 through 20. Then the seventh angel poured out his bowl into the air and a loud voice came out of the temple of heaven from the throne saying, it is done. And there were noises and thunderings and lightnings and there was a great earthquake such a mighty and great earthquake as had not occurred since men were on the earth. Now the great city was divided into three parts, and the cities of the nations fell, and great Babylon was remembered before God, to give her the cup of the wine of the fierceness of his wrath. Then every island fled away, and the mountains were not found. Starvation has become the new reality in Sudan. Families who have fled to Omdurman now rely on community kitchens. But many had resorted to extreme measures to survive. The children are collecting tree leaves and eating them. They took mango leaves and ate them. My cousin walked next to the school and collected the tree leaves, cooked them and ate them, because we didn't know if we would have food for breakfast. People find solutions. Pigeons, they eat pigeons. The geese in the river, any birds, small birds, it was normal. There were people in the neighborhood who ate cats. Either you die from hunger or find a way. This hunger crisis is not just affecting the Khartoum capital area. Displacement camps in North Darfur have seen a rise in malnutrition as aid funding falters. We are moving towards famine and the anecdotal evidence is not encouraging. Uh, we get reports of people eating leaves off of trees, people not eating but once every three days. Uh, we have recorded deaths from malnutrition of children in North Darfur uh, and in other locations. Aid agencies say immediate action is needed. The Integrated Food Security Phase Classification, a globally recognized hunger monitor, says nearly 5 million people are one step from famine. Despite the deepening food crisis, the situation in Sudan has drawn less international scrutiny than other humanitarian emergencies in places like Gaza and Ukraine. Meanwhile, Residents and medical NGO, Doctors Without Borders, say people are already dying from disease and malnutrition in what some observers have called the Forgotten War. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu says Israel will do what's necessary to win the war and defeat its enemies. Any deal to end the fighting without defeating Hamas is a non-starter. Israeli forces continue preparations to launch an assault on the last Hamas stronghold in Rafah, where the remaining hostages may be held captive. Israeli troops and tanks continue to gather near Rafah for an expected military operation. Rafah is where many believe the leaders of Hamas are hiding, as well as the remaining battalions of Hamas fighters. It's also thought to be the location of the last remaining hostages. While Hamas seems to reject the latest ceasefire offer, it apparently wants negotiations to continue, a tactic that could be intended 
to forestall the IDF's invasion. But Israel's prime minister says they will move ahead with their plans for an assault. We will do what is necessary in order to win and overcome our enemies, including in Rafah, in order to secure our future. Two top Hamas demands are that Israel ends the war against the terrorist group and that all Israeli troops leave the Gaza Strip. But Netanyahu told visiting U.S. Secretary of State Anthony Blinken a deal to end the war without defeating Hamas is a non-starter. Meanwhile, along the northern border, negotiations to broker a peace between Hezbollah and Israel appear stalled. In light of that, Israel's military chief of staff, Herzi Halevi, told commanders Israel is getting ready for an attack on Hezbollah. You are doing an excellent job of operational defense in the north, and now we are preparing for an offensive operation as well. Samer Gigia, a prominent Christian politician in Lebanon, says Hezbollah constant attacks on Israel since October 7th are hurting Lebanon more than Israel. The tit-for-tat shellings and bombings have killed 22 Israelis. But the death toll is much higher in Lebanon itself, more than 350. As a sign of his coming and the end of the age, Jesus declares, and you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not troubled, for all these things must come to pass. But the end is not yet, for nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. The prophets of the Old Testament prophesied of these future military conflicts in Isaiah 17:1, in which Damascus, Syria will be destroyed in a single night. Jeremiah 49, the prophecy of Alam, which could infer an Israeli attack upon Iran's nuclear program. Psalm 83, in which the Muslim nations that border Israel will mount an attack on Israel in order to cut them off from being a nation. Ezekiel 38 and 39, known as the War of Gog and Magog. In this prophecy, a coalition of nations led by Russia, Iran, and Turkey will attack Israel in the last days in order to take Israel's wealth. Turkey has become the first of Israel's key partners to halt trade over the conflict in Gaza. Trade Minister Omar Bolat said on Friday Ankara would not resume the trade with Israel until a permanent ceasefire and humanitarian aid for Gaza are secured. This was Turkish President Tayyip Erdogan. All of the West is working for Israel, starting with America, they are all working for Israel. All of these means are being mobilized to unfortunately condemn the waifs and strays, the poor and the have-nots of Palestine, to death in the face of Israel's bombs. We could not have remained patient in the face of these, so we took our steps. There was a trade volume of $9.5 billion between us. Israel's foreign minister, Israel Katz, criticized the suspension, saying it breaks international trade agreements and calling it how a dictator behaves. The militant group Hamas, which rules Gaza, praised the decision as brave and supportive of Palestinian rights. Turkey has denounced Israel's military campaign in Gaza and sent thousands of tons of aid for Gazans. This week it said it would join South Africa's genocide case against Israel at the International Court of Justice. The puzzle pieces are falling rapidly into place concerning a prophecy concerning Russia, Iran and Turkey, known as the War of Gog and Magog, spoken of by the prophet Ezekiel. Turkey is a member of NATO, making them an ally of the United States. But as we can see by recent events, the relationship between the two is falling apart. On top of that, Turkey is jockeying for closer ties with Russia. Ezekiel 38, 1-9 The word of the Lord came to me, Son of man, set your face toward Gog of the land of Magog, the chief prince of Meshach and Tubal, and prophesy against him, and say, Thus says the Lord God, Behold, I am against you, O Gog, chief prince of Meshach and Tubal, and I will turn you about and put hooks into your jaws, and I will bring you out and all your army, horses and horsemen, all of them clothed in full armor, a great host, all of them with buckler and shield, wielding swords, Persia, Cush, and Put are with them, all of them with shield and helmet, Gomer and all his hordes, Beth Garma from the uttermost parts of the north with all his hordes, many peoples are with you. Be ready and keep ready, you and all your hosts that are assembled about you, and be a guard for them. After many days you will be mustered. In the latter years you will go against the land that is restored from war, the land whose people were gathered from many peoples upon the mountains of Israel, which had been a continual waste. Its people were brought out from the peoples and now dwell securely, all of them. You will advance, coming on like a storm, you will be like a cloud covering the land, you and all your hordes, and many peoples with you. These are the modern day nations in Ezekiel 38 and 39 that many people believe will be mustered in the latter years to attack Israel. Russia, Iran, Turkey, Libya, 
Sudan, and Ethiopia. As we can see by recent events, stage setting for the War of Gog and Magog is taking place as Russia, Iran, and Turkey are forming a dangerous alliance at the doorstep of Israel's border. God tells us exactly what will happen to Iran, Russia, Turkey, and the many peoples with you when they attack Israel in Ezekiel 38, 18 through 23, and 39 to 7 and 8. And it will come to pass at the same time when God comes against the land of Israel, says the Lord God, that my fury will show in my face. For in my jealousy and in the fire of my wrath I have spoken. Surely in that day there shall be a great earthquake in the land of Israel, so that the fish of the sea, the birds of the heavens, the beasts of the field, all creeping things that creep on the earth, and all men who are on the face of the earth shall shake at my presence. The mountains shall be thrown down, the steep places shall fall, and every wall shall fall to the ground. I will call for a sword against Gog throughout all my mountains, says the Lord God. Every man's sword will be against his brother, and I will bring him into judgment with pestilence and bloodshed. I will rain down on him, on his troops, and on the many peoples who are with him, flooding rain, great hailstones, fire, and brimstone. Thus I will magnify myself and sanctify myself, and I will be known in the eyes of many nations. Then they shall know that I am the Lord. And I will turn thee back, and leave but the sixth part of thee, and will cause thee to come up from the north parts, and will bring thee upon the mountains of Israel. So I will make my holy name known in the midst of my people Israel, and I will not let them profane my holy name any more. Then the nation shall know that I am the Lord, the Holy One in Israel. Surely it is coming, and it shall be done, says the Lord God. This is the day of which I have spoken. I've been informed by top-ranking military officials that Israel has been unable to launch even a single plane in defense. As I stand here, fighter planes are exploding in midair. They're crashing and falling to the ground without any explanation. And while no one can seem to give me any reason for why this is happening, I can tell you this. This all-out, unprecedented attempt to destroy Israel appears to be failing. God is the one who fights this battle for Israel. He does it for two reasons. To make his holy name known in the midst of his people Israel, that the nation shall know that he is the Lord, the Holy One in Israel. Zechariah 2, 8, and 9. For thus says the Lord of hosts, He sent me after glory to the nations which plunder you. For he who touches you touches the apple of his eye. For surely I will shake my hand against them, and they shall become spoil for their servants then you will know that the Lord of hosts has sent me. Israel is precious to Almighty God, the apple of his eye. He is simply saying, You touch my chosen nation Israel, you poke me in the eye. Is Vladimir Putin the infamous Gog of Magog that the prophet Ezekiel warned would come on the scene in the last days and lead a coalition of nations to destroy Israel? Or could Gog be Recep Tayyip Erdogan, another dictator, who is fast gaining power and dominance in the Middle East? Biblical scholars can't agree if the prophet Ezekiel was talking about a last day's assault on Israel being led by Russia or Turkey. Many popular Bible teachers claim that Gog will come from Russia, while others claim that Ezekiel's prophecy actually points to Turkey. Whether Gog is from Russia or Turkey, both nations are presently being led by undisputed dictators who could each very easily fit the Gog profile. In the book of Luke, Jesus' disciples asked him about the signs of the times and the end of the age, as we read in Luke 21, 7. So they asked him, saying, Teacher, but when will these things be? And what sign will there be when these things are about to take place? Jesus answered his disciples and proclaimed this in Luke 21, 25 through 28. And there will be signs in the sun, in the moon, and in the stars, and on the earth distress of nations, with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring, men's hearts failing them from fear, and the expectation of those things which are coming on the earth, for the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Now when these things begin to happen, look up and lift up your heads, because your redemption draws near. Jesus goes on to warn his disciples about not getting caught up in the cares of this life, and how important it is to watch and pray, as we read in Luke 21, 34 through 36. But take heed to yourselves, lest your hearts be weighed down with carousing, drunkenness, and cares of this life, and that day come on you unexpectedly, for it will come as a snare on all those who dwell on the face of the whole earth. Watch therefore, and pray always 
that you may be counted worthy to escape all these things that will come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. The signs of Jesus' soon return are so strong now, and the evidence is so clear that any person willing to accept the truth can see that the end of the world as we know it is near. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whoever believes in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But God demonstrates His own love toward us, in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised Him from the dead, you will be saved. These are the ABCs of salvation. A. Admit that you're a sinner. B. Believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died for your sins, was buried, and God raised Him from the dead. C. Call upon the name of the Lord, and you will be saved. Jesus paid the price for mankind's sin. He has provided a way to spend eternity with Him and the Father. All you have to do is believe in the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved. God has already done all the work. All you must do is receive, in faith, the salvation God offers. Fully trust in Jesus alone as the payment for your sins. Believe in Him, and you will not perish. God is offering you salvation as a gift. All you have to do is accept it. Jesus is the only way of salvation. That being said, we must repent of our sins. While repentance is not a work that earns salvation, repentance unto salvation does result in works. It is impossible to truly and fully change your mind without that causing a change in action. In the Bible, repentance results in a change in behavior. Repentance, properly defined, is necessary for salvation. One day, Jesus is coming. You may be at church. You may be at work. You may be asleep. God grant that you will be ready when he makes his personal appearance. My God, what if his appearance occurs on a Sunday morning? My prophetic word to you this morning is get ready, get ready! is short. Call upon the name of Jesus today.